Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the nine books I have read so far in August. I normally read way more than nine books but work just started back up again after being off for like two months in the summertime. Um, so, but it should even out and I should get back on track, okay. Um, but these are the nine books that I have read so far in August and I'm gonna be going in the order that I read them. I finally picked up The Four Leaf by Lee Jaquo. I never know how to say her name, I'm so sorry. Um, but this is a novella that has been on many TBRs for me. I've been wanting to read it for a while. Um, I've heard great things about it. It has like the chasing primal, thing okay and um people seem to really like this author's uh, novellas this is my second one i've read from her and i definitely want to pick up more i think i just downloaded her she has an alice in wonderland duet that's also mafia so i just downloaded that i'm very excited anyway um so this one is actually a friends to lovers romance i did not know that's what it was going to be before picking it up um but yeah it takes place on St. Patrick's Day. Each book in this like little novella series, um, they are not like related to each other anyway. The only commonality is that each novella takes place on a certain holiday. So I think like, the first one was like Christmas. I haven't read that one. I've read the Valentine's Day one, Cupid's Peak. And now this one, The Four Leaf takes place on St. Patrick's Day. I think there's even like a Mother's Day one, a Labor Day one. So like, I just want to read all of them in this series. Anyway, so this is about Sam and Adrian and they have been best friends for a while, but they've also been pining after each other for a while. Um, Sam's family owns this very popular hotel called the Fort Leaf that is very popular around St. Patrick's Day. You can tell why. Um, and for a long time, the two characters, Adrian and Sam have been pining after the other, <laughs> um, but they don't want to ruin their friendships. So they've never taken it that far. But then Sam accidentally walks in on Adrian in an inopportune moment. And um, Adrian sees this as the like, go ahead to like, just ruin their friendship already. This was super hot. Okay, super hot. If you want like hot, diverse novellas, you have to read the series because it was like all the books in the series that I've read so far great for trope in this one you have the primal one okay friends to lovers it takes place during a holiday it's on kindle unlimited it's a novella and there is a shower scene okay i gave this book four and five stars i'm on ashley bennett's arc team and i love her books so much and lefiathan fitness's third book came out recently which is mantras and minotaurs i think i read this book on release day specifically because <laughs> i just wanted to read it as close to the release date as possible. And this one is actually the romance between um, two older characters, which is so refreshing. You don't really read about older people falling in love. Okay, so the heroine of this book is actually the mother to one of the heroes from book two and the heroine from book one who are like grown adults, you know what I mean? So she is I think in her early 50s, late 40s, I don't remember, honestly, um, but in that age range. And this is her romance with another single guy who happens to have a kid who's older and they actually match on a dating app. So it's a dating app romance and they have like the most amazing first date, but they have to do like long distance because he was just in town to help take care of his sick daughter. And he lives all the way in Colorado, which is far away from where this series takes place in. And um, so they have like a long distance romance and I've read two of those. I'm gonna talk about one in a second that's like long distance. And it was interesting to read about like long distance romances cause you don't really read about those. But I feel like we need more because there are so many couples out there that are long distance. I really enjoyed also the like yoga and mantras part in here is really refreshing. I really did enjoy also just Pam and Alistair as like individuals and a couple, they were so cute. If you want like a cute, but hot, but hot, okay, uh, series. Like I keep saying that about this series, like you need to pick them up. Um, there's trigger warnings in here for uh, mentions of spousal death and THC use, uh, memorable quotes. <laughs> this is in Alistair's point of view. He says to Pam, uh, you deserve pleasure. You deserve to be treated like the goddess you are let me give you that yes okay um tropes there are a bunch book lovers um pam even gets alistair to read ipb in this book 
Are you joking? Are you joking? Yes, okay. Books with pets. There's Remy the cat. Pam has a cat named Remy. She dresses in cute sweaters that she knits. It's so cute. Um, characters with glasses, Pam. Um, Cinnamon Roll Hero, cute but hot uh, dating apps. This hero has a mouth on him. Um, you have Insta Love, Tindle Limited, It's Long Distance, A Monster Romance, No Third Act Breakup, An Older Couple, they have some phone time, okay? Um, single parents, the hero has a tail, okay? And um, the heroine is a widow. I gave this book four out of five stars. I do wanna mention that I read Mickey Chambers' Shakes It Up by Cherish Reed with Brie over at Lemon Words for our Chronically Courageous book club. I'll link our live show down below. This was such a good book, y'all. Y'all need to go check out that live show. We just gush and gush and gush and gush about it. <laughs> this is the romance between Mickey Chambers and Diego. Diego owns a bar. He is a widower and he needs some help in the bar. Um, but he is also an unconventional student. He is going to back to college later on in life to finally get his degree. And he's gonna test out the waters at this college by taking a summer writing course. Mickey just happens to be the teacher of said summer writing course in the college. Um, but Diego doesn't know that when he hires her to work at the bar. Um, it isn't until later when they've already like agreed and everything that he realizes, oh, uh, that's my professor. <laughs> um, so it's this interesting balance of like boss employee because he is her boss in this bar, but then she is his professor in this college. So there's like an interesting dynamic between the two of them. Um, but it's also grumpy sunshine. Diego is very grumpy. He has like an aversion to talking to people, which I do not blame him. And Mickey is definitely a sunshine. So um, I loved this one. The representation in here is with Mickey. She has hyperthyroidism. So we like loved the discussion of chronic illnesses in here and being with a partner who is chronically ill and what does that mean for you. So be sure to go check out our live show. Again, linked down below if you wanna know more of our thoughts. Next, I picked up Lady Wallflower by Scarlett Scott. I've had this book on my shelves for a while. I just saw a Scarlett Scott book at like a used bookstore and bought it. <laughs> um, and this is the second book in her Notorious Ladies of London series, um, which is one of her series that is on Audible Plus. So you can listen to this series for free if you have Audible. Um, but I read the first book in this series, Lady Ruthless, earlier this year, top three favorite books of the year for me. I adored it. So I was like, I have to read book two. I just have to. Um, so we met the heroine of this one, I believe in book one, and this is her romance. And I'm not gonna lie, I barely remember anything about this book. I am sad to say, I think this is my least favorite Scott Scott book I have read. It may just have been me and this funky mood I've been in. Um, I've been in this funky mood that's been affecting my reading where I've been like feeling slumpy. So my books I'm reading are slumpy, but I just wasn't really into this. I don't think I really liked the hero very much. And yeah, there's like the whole plot line of like love lessons where the heroine loses her bucket list, if you will, of all of the scandalous things she wants to do. Um, but she's a wallflower, she's fairly innocent, and the hero ends up finding that list and wants her to complete those scandalous things with him. And that's all I remember about it. I gave it three stars. It was like fine. I just didn't care about the heroine. I didn't care about the hero. I didn't really care about their romance. And I don't remember like anything. I don't see why the heroine fell in love with this hero. Like I didn't like him like at all. <laughs> now we're gonna be talking about a great read because I finally picked up Next to You by Hannah Bonham Young. I've read all of her books now. I am so happy. Um, but yeah, this one is so good. I love friends to lovers romances. So this just fed that loving part of my soul. Like I love this book. This is about Lane and Matt and they have been friends ever since their respective best friends uh, fell in love with each other in book one in this series. So Chloe and Warren from book one are their best friends. At the beginning of this book, it's like Lane's birthday and she gets a little too shoisted one night. And while she's just like scrolling in bed, she ends up across a like TikTok about somebody like redoing a school bus and making it their mobile home and living in it. She's like, oh my gosh, I would love to do that. She ends up impulse buying a school bus. <laughs> and she asks Matt to help her basically redo it to make it a mobile home for her to live in. Matt and Warren own a like mechanic shop. So like they're perfect for this job. So they end up spending a lot more time together than they already do. And their pent up feelings <laughs> definitely surface because they have these very lustful longing feelings for each other, but they don't wanna really cross that line and ruin the other person's friendship. Hannah Bottom Young can do no more wrong in my eyes. She's a fantastic author. She also just goes to show 
how you don't need to have a third act breakup in your romance books to make people love your books. Like I think all four books that she's written, none of them have a third act breakup. And I adore them so much. Like I get some romances, you need that third act breakup part in here. You sometimes don't like be adults and handle it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So I think all of her books have that aspect and I, I love that. These characters are so mature. They're funny and do sometimes immature things like we all do. We're human. They're real people. They feel like real people to me. I could not put this book down. The audiobook is fantastic. I was like sobbing at the end, that last part. I was texting Caitlin and Zay because they've been wanting me to read this book for forever because um, they love it. And I was like texting them at like 12.30 saying like, I finished it and I'm sobbing. <laughs> This book goes to show how amazing like a friends to lovers romance could be. This is one of those books for readers who don't love friends to lovers. You pick this book up, you will like friends to lovers. I really related to Lane in here. Like, oh, I love her so much. It's so hard to see all the people around you having these very fulfilling lives and feeling like you're 20 steps behind them, but you're the same age. Like, I feel her so hard. She's seeing her best friend being a mother, she's seeing her best friend married, she's seeing her best friend doing amazing job things. And she's like, I bought a school bus and that is like great for me. Um, but she also sees like her friends going on with their lives and she is feeling a lot of anxiety and a lot of panic because of it. She feels like she isn't doing well with her life because she's not at the same point as her friends, which who really hit me in the chest, okay? Just to say a lot of her internal thoughts in this book is what I internally think about quite a lot. I also just love Matt. He's the sweetest ever cinnamon hero. Definitely hero falls first. He is full on there for Lane. He really reminds me of Ren Bergman. If you love Ren Bergman, you need to read about Matt, okay? There is rep in here for a, a bi heroin, agoraphobia and anxiety. For trigger warnings, you have an off page car accident, grief over the death of a loved one, tropes, worshiping hero, friends to lovers, longing, grumpy sunshine, where the heroine is the grump and the hero is the sunshine, okay? Um, cinnamon roll hero, hero falls first. An artistic character, Lane in here is definitely artistic. She even designed like all the tattoos that she has on her body. I love her. Uh, and it's a road trip romance, a portion of the book is a road trip romance. And there is a one bed scene that was so good. It was so good. I gave this book five out of five stars. I loved it. Earlier in the video, I said that I read another like long distance romance and that is with Relationship Goals by Christina C. Jones. Um, I picked this one up because I heard it has sickle cell um, disease representation, which is a chronic illness I have never read about before. So I thought I would pick it up. Nick and Noah are our two main characters. Someone takes a picture of them kissing in an airport and it kind of goes viral online. Um, but no one knows that that was the first time they've ever met. That was the first time they spoke. Nick decided to just kiss Noah because something on his bucket list says like, kiss a beautiful stranger or something like that. And he like walks away after the kiss, not expected to see this woman ever again. But then their kiss goes viral online because he didn't know that Noah was a little bit internet famous, like famous in general. They end up reconnecting again. Like she ends up DMing him being like, why did you kiss me? And thus starts their long distance romance. Um, this was so hot, it was so hot, okay. Um, I feel like it was just the perfect length for this book also, it's like close to 200 pages, a little bit less. And I felt like Christina C. Jones like made it the perfect length. I love the discussion of chronic illnesses in here. Like I talked about in um, Mickey Chambers Shakes It Up, like this book talks a lot about being chronically ill and what it means for your partner and the person you're gonna be with for the rest of your life. Like, what does that mean for them? Like, how are you gonna affect them? But overall, I really enjoyed this one. Um, definitely a great read. I definitely recommend for rep in here. Um, you have a chronic illness of sickle cell disease. The hero in here has sickle cell that um, was passed down from his father. Trigger warnings in here for previous childhood abuse on the heroine side. Um, tropes. Um, this is a black love romance, by the way. Uh, long distance celebrity. The heroine is a celebrity. I think the hero is too. I can't remember. Um, it's a novella. Um, it's a novella on audio. You have like the going viral happenstance, you know? I don't really know what to title that trope. I just wrote going viral. <laughs> and it definitely has a memorable meet cute moment with him just kissing her in an airport. So I gave this book four out of five stars. I think this next book solidified that romantic suspense is just 
not it for me okay i think i've accepted that um this is here with me by samantha young the first book in her adair family series i really want to like this book i did it's like a 15 hour audiobook okay which is very long for a contemporary romance okay i just didn't care about these characters i didn't care about their romance i didn't care about the mystery i didn't care <laughs> i didn't care i think it got to 70 percent of this book and i'm like I'm not gonna rate this book well. Why am I gonna finish it? I don't have to. So I didn't have to at 70%. I just didn't care what was going on. Whenever I wanted to pick up an audiobook, I was like, oh great, I'm still listening to this. I don't want to anymore. So I didn't have to. I can't even really tell you what it's about. Like I think the heroine goes to Scotland to like reconnect with her dad who abandoned her when he was a kid, when she was a kid. And, um, but there's more to the story about that. And she has to help solve a crime because she used to be a cop on the estate that he runs because like there's dead animals showing up and weird messages being written on walls and people being shot at like or stabbed i don't know it was a lot i just i didn't care i think that's what i feel like with romantic suspense is i don't care about like the murder mystery plot i just want the romance and like i got to 70 percent of the book and they were still like hating each other the two main characters and i'm like what's the point I don't care about them either, so I am done. <laughs> then I ended up picking up Come With Me by um, Brooke Montgomery. This is the prequel to her Sugarland Creek series. I think book one comes out fairly soon, which I'm very excited for, because that's one that's a, a small town romance that is um, ex-boyfriend's dad, which whew, I'm very much looking forward to. Okay, but I had to read the prequel novella. I was able to get a um, audiobook link to it to listen to for free. So I listened to it and it was okay. It was fine. This is the second chance romance with Aiden and Lainey. They fell in love when they were teenagers, but Aiden comes from a very abusive household. And I think when he like turns 18, he d decides to move out of their small town and go run away basically and have his abusive father like never be able to find him. His father is very powerful. I think he was the mayor or something. And he basically tells his girlfriend who he's very much in love with still, he like abandons her and is like, um, sorry, babe, I gotta go. And just like abandons her. <laughs> he doesn't know though that she's pregnant and she can't get in touch with him to tell, tell him that she's pregnant with his baby. This book then jumps to 10 years later and them reconnecting and uh, Aiden figuring out that he is a father. I just felt like everything was so convenient and they were like, I don't know. I also just think I was in that funky mood where I was like, I found like everything to be cringy and be like, are you joking? <laughs> I don't know. I've been in like a, a negative Nelly mood recently and that's definitely affected my reading. So I just was reading this being like, okay, this dude is just becoming a father way too easily. I felt like he accepted everything so easily and I just wanted more, I guess, but it was also a novella. Like I'm like, Avery, give it some grace. It was a novella. I've just, again, I've been in this funk and you can definitely tell that for the last like couple books that I mentioned, I've been in this moody funk that has affected my reading okay i gave it three stars it was fine i'm hoping that the main first book in the series like i hope i love it and the last book that i have to talk about is the co-op by tara duet i've been waiting on my hold for um funny feelings to come in through libby but this one was sooner so i'm currently have that one still on hold uh funny feelings um but the co-op came available and i was like let's listen to that and i do know that a lot of people love funny feelings more than the co-op so i thought it would be like a good way for me to dip my toe into Tara Duet is to read the co-op first. You know what I mean? Because I think some people read Funny Feelings and then read the co-op and didn't love the co-op as much as Funny Feelings, so they rated it lower, or that's what some of my friends have said. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go into the co-op without have re having read anything else by her. This one's about Lauren and uh, Deacon. They were all over each other as teens. They hooked up for like a year or a summer or something when they were teens, staying at uh, like their grandparents' house their grandmas were like together. They got together, you know what I mean? They'd sneak off to be together, but then one day they got caught and what happens during that instance like forces them to like hate each other. You know, like do not like each other anymore. They haven't seen each other since that day, but their grandmothers have died and the home that they own, um, like 50% of it is now given to Deacon and the other 50% is given to Lorraine. And so they're having to figure out how to fix up this house and then sell it for a higher profit. But they have to work together because they own 
50% of the house. So they have to live together in this run down, falling down house when they don't like each other. <laughs> and to make it a little bit more um, entertaining, <laughs> um, they're having trouble like financially fixing up the house and Lorraine will get a trust from her, I think the dead grandmother, if she gets married. And so they have to get married in order to get the trust to fix up the house. Again, like I said, this is my first book by her. It didn't disappoint. I really enjoyed her writing style. I really liked it. I loved both characters. I loved how there was no third act breakup. I really liked seeing their slow development from like, you betrayed me, you really hurt me, to like friends to lovers. Again, I also just love their banter. It was top tier in this one, okay? Um, and I realized like I kind of really like like home renovation <laughs> romances. Like they're fun, they're really fun. Okay, so representation here for dyslexia. Lauren has dyslexia and watch out because uh, she gets like, she talks about when she was a kid, like her dad really affected her in her self-confidence with her dyslexia. So please be aware of that. He was very like belittling towards her. Um, sure going is in here for parental abandonment. Um, tropes, marriage of convenience, it's a slow burn, second chance, forced proximity, roommates, hate to love, no third act breakup, home renovation, and it has great banter. I gave this book four out of five stars. Anyways, there you have it. Those were the nine books that I've read so far in August. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the house emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.